emotional excitement increase as you get closer to completing the novel? It does. And when you're particularly writing a first draft of a book, it's kind of really great and it's awful at the same time because you are very excited as it's coming out, but you don't know if it's going to come out right. So um, it's terrifying. And, and the story always changes. When you start, you think you're going to one point, but then it slowly changes and the characters want to do something else. And so you get to the end and you find you've, you've created the end of a whole different book. So you have to go back to the start and rewrite it. So, um, yeah, it's, um, it's the bit I really hate is coming out with the first draft. Once you've got it, no matter how scrappy or um, unfunny it is, I can start improving it. So, um, so yeah, that's, uh, but it is very exciting. It, at the same time, it's like Chris, waiting for Christmas because suddenly you've got this book where you didn't have one. So. Wait a minute. Which book did you have the most fun writing? Um, thanks, Christian. That's a good question. Uh, I think it's whenever I'm working with Terry Denton, uh, we have a lot of fun. And I think it would be the bad book, which was where we wanted to... Um, he always scribbled around the edges of the just books. And we said, wouldn't it be great to have a book that's just made of that scribble? And so we did the bad book, and uh, we had no idea what we were doing. We had no rules. We just we just said, let's explore and experiment what happens when when we just be really really silly. And uh, so that was the bad book, and um, that's where we we really made each other laugh while we were doing that. And uh, and that's where the cow went kapow came from. We took the bad book and we wrote the very, very silly story, Ed and Ted and Ted's bad dog, Fred, where um, Fred, the bad dog, bites Ed on the head and then um, Ed leaves the shed where they live and there's a big chase and they all end up dead. And uh, we thought that was such fun. We thought we'll write a whole book where all the stories rhyme like that. So that was the bit, the cat on the map uh, is flat. And then that's led into the cow, the big fat cow that goes kapow. Um, in the Just Books, why did you choose like a particular family? I actually uh, worked on the first Just Book for about 10 years, trying to find the right way to tell it. And I, um, I had a narrator who, and I would tell it as if it was me telling about that character. So I'd say... Uh, Billy such and such was a very mischievous boy but it never felt right and then I thought the way I always tell stories is as if it's happened to me and we had a lot of kids in our neighbourhood when I grew up and I used to enjoy seeing how ridiculous a story I could get them to believe and so if I had a cut on my hand for instance I'd say see that cut and they go yeah and I'd say you know what, how I got that and they go no and I say, oh, it was a shark bite. I got bitten by a shark. And they go, really? And I go, yeah, yeah, I was in the bath and this fin was coming through the suds towards me. And they go, really? And I go, yeah, yeah. And then I got my rubber duck and I whacked the shark on the head. And I go, did you? And I go, yeah, yeah. And then a, a big tentacle came out of the tap and got me round the neck. And um, I go, wow, that's amazing. And... And so you can make a, it's, you've probably done it, made little kids believe silly things. So, so that's the, um, that's where I tell the stories. And when I, I found the right voice was, I just think it's me, the story's happening to me. I'm with my mum and my dad. Now I've got, in real life, I have two sisters, uh, Susan and Julie, but in the book, I didn't want too many characters. So I squished them together to make one sister. And I made her older so that she could have a boyfriend so that the Andy in the, car in the books could annoy her and embarrass her in front of the boyfriend. So I made little changes, but only what I had to change. I had a dog called Sooty, and Sooty really was a crazy dog. Uh, he spent his whole life running up and down the hill we lived on chasing cars. And, and not just chasing cars, but trying to bite the tyres. And I really admired that because... If he'd ever succeeded, uh, he would have just, you know, got his head on the tongue and, blah, 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 and, and died. But I loved that he really wanted the tyre that much. 
And so the key to Andy in the story is that Andy is half boy, half based on my life, and he's also half dog in that his brain is very small and he can only think of one thing at a time and he just goes for it. So where most of us would stop, Andy just keeps going. And, um, and, and I just borrowed a lot of my life uh, to, to make it easy for me to tell the story. Have you thought of any more Just books? Yeah, probably Just Weird will be the, uh, the one that comes out next. Maybe it'll take two years, who knows. What made you come up with the Day Your Bum Went Psycho series? Like a lot of my stories started off as just a joke. Uh, an interviewer on TV asked me, would I ever write anything serious? And I said, yes, I'm working on a very serious book at the moment called The Day My Bum Went Psycho. And um, they, they reported that on the program. And I just thought that was so funny that they took it seriously. I said to my publisher, I'm going to write a book called The Day My Bum Went Psycho. And I said, great, that sounds very funny. And um, then I had a problem because I didn't know what was going to happen. And I had to ask myself, why would a bum go psycho? What would, what would life be like from the point of view of a bum? And uh, so I imagined it wouldn't be much fun being a bum because you've got the worst job in the human body. You're in someone's trousers all day or dress. Uh, you, you never get to see anything. You don't get to watch TV. Um, you don't get to eat anything, It'd be, and, and everyone makes fun of you. And, uh, and usually all you get for your, your, um, your trouble is that someone kicks you in the bum. So uh, I thought a, a bum would be very jealous of the head. And if you're a bum, what you'd want to do is rearrange the human body so that you rode around on top of the neck and your head had to go and do the work of the bum. So I get a very silly idea. And then I work very seriously and logically on how that idea might work. So that's an important thing. When I'm writing a funny story, I'm actually not trying to be funny. I'm just trying to follow what would, would happen. And I'm also trying to surprise the reader at any point. So a lot of where my ideas come from is just what's the opposite of what's supposed to happen. And to get back to your original question, bums are not supposed to jump off people's bodies and run away. Um, so that's very tempting for me to write a story about. Do you think your stories would make a good movie? Someone did buy the rights to make the Bum series into a movie, but they seem to have been working on it for about six years now. And I suspect that the world is not ready for a, a movie about bums. Um, <laughs> I'm not that worried. I actually like books to be books. Um, they made the Just series into a, a, a TV cartoon. And you can go to my website and click on the link that will take you through to the YouTube um, clips from the cartoon. But to me, the cartoon is something completely different from what I imagine. So I really love books, and that's, that's where I'm interested in. Um, how come you only write books I, for kids and not for adults? Well, to tell you the truth, I, I actually don't write them specifically for kids. I'm writing just the way that I can write uh, the clearest and, and usually funniest story I can. Not all adults like stories about runaway bums or, um, or people eating disgusting things, though. Uh, that tends to be something kids really, really like. So the books uh, skew to that. But in, um, in the Schooling Around series, which Treasure Fever is part of, I tried to, um, to make the stories... Uh, not so many bums and not so much uh, yucky stuff. And my, uh, my wife's mother, who's 85, really, really loves this book. So, um, so I'm very happy to write, write a story for as many people as I can. And I think a lot of adults secretly like them but can't bring themselves to admit it. We would also like to thank you, all the people at the Premier's Reading Challenge, for organising today, especially the people from the Dimmicks Foundation who are great supporters of the Premier's Reading Challenge. Andy, do you want any last words before we go? Um, go away and leave me all alone. I've got a book to write. <laughs> all right, thanks again. Let's...